surge in New York City. Republicans putting the blame on some controversial state legislation like bail reform leading to this headline. GOP urges justice policy reversals after crime spike. Joining us now, Trey Gowdy, former chairman of the House Oversight Committee and Fox News contributor. Good morning to you and thanks for being here. So I'll leave the question open-ended to you. What is causing this crime spike in New York City? I think there's a couple of things. Number one is a culture of lawlessness. I mean, you can't berate the police for months and months. You also can't have a list of crimes that are worth enforcing and ones that are not. I mean, look at the message being sent over the last couple of months. Arson's okay. Destroying public property is okay. But God forbid you lie to Peter Strzok or Adam Schiff. So it's a culture of lawlessness. Um, I can also tell you this, Sandra. Uh, I was in a, in a criminal courtroom for almost two decades. Uh, there's a really limited number of people that are going to hurt you, Sandra. Really limited number of your fellow citizens that want to hurt or kill you. So the best thing for you is to separate them from you, whether that be in prison or in jail awaiting trial. So when you have bail reform or bond reform, you are letting people out that otherwise in the past would have been detained until their trial date. So if 95 percent of our fellow citizens are good people and law abiding and people of good conscience, just identify the 5 percent and separate them from society, that's the way to get crime to go down. Well, it's interesting, depending on who you ask, that is your take, uh, Trey, but Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the congresswoman from New York, uh, claims that this is about unemployment, and she made a lot of headlines for suggesting that this is about residents who need to shoplift some bread for their family. She's doubling down on that in a brand new tweet. She says this, Republicans are all upset that I'm connecting the dots between poverty and crime. I know most of them have haven't experienced or seen these issues firsthand, but I have. This may be hard for them to admit, but poverty and crime are highly linked, both violent and nonviolent alike. Your response? Uh, God forbid my two, my two decades in a courtroom compare with her experience as a bartender, Sandra. Uh, was the one-year-old holding a loaf of bread? Well, she's a was the one-year-old killed? Uh, in New York because that child was holding a loaf of bread. I mean, poor people are no more likely to cause you harm than rich people are. That is not the line of demarcation. It is not whether or not you are rich or poor. It is whether you are law-abiding or not law-abiding. So the, the spike in murder cases, the spike in auto theft, the spike in burglaries, what in the hell does that have to do with people being hungry? I'll, I'll give you one other way. Go check the criminal histories of the people committing these murders. See how many of them are committing their first criminal offense since the pandemic started, and see how many of them are career offenders, where this is just the culmination of a lifetime of crime that resulted in murder. Got it. I'll bet you they're not first time offenders. So you are firing right back, and she will make the case that you are a Republican making that point. However, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, takes her on and says this. Yeah, it is factually impossible that somebody committed a crime so they could pay their rent. If you can't pay your rent, you cannot be evicted right now. He's the Democratic governor of New York, and he's clearly taking, uh, taking issue with her stance on that. Yeah, I think anyone that, that believes in logic will take issue with her stance. I mean, I, you can't be evicted in New York, so how can you be killing people because you're being evicted? This is a state and a city run by Democrats, so if they're having a hard time getting bread, she needs to look at her own party and not blame Republicans. We don't run New York. She does. All right. Here's the president yesterday talking about our police departments and continued calls to abolish or defund them. Listen. They want to abolish our police departments. They want to abolish our prisons, I guess, incentivize jail and prison closures as populations decline, ensure the resources saved are invested directly into those communities. So they want to close them rather than have them for some very bad people. Where is this country right now, Trey, on this conversation, on this growing debate? as we do see crime and violence spiking in places like New York and other major U.S. cities. Well, I think reasonable-minded people are here. We want a justice system that we respect and one that is worthy of respect. And if that means getting rid of bad cops and bad prosecutors and bad judges, I'm all for that. 
Uh, but it also has to mean getting rid of the people who want to do violence and harm us. So that's 5% of the population, max, 5%. Let's identify that five. Let's prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. And oh, by the way, you're going to need cops and prisons to do that. I am all for improving our justice system. I spent two decades trying to do it. But the notion that we're going to be safer by getting rid of police is just a non sequitur. All right, Trey Gowdy, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for coming on with us. Yes, ma'am. Thank right. you. John